Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as we take a trip back in time to go through the 1971 issue of RC Modeler magazine, a tribute to one of the foundational magazines of the RC uh, modeling industry. Let's get to it. RCM or RC Modeler magazine was the standard radio control model magazine for several decades. It began in 1963. The founder and first editor, Don Dewey, started it in his kitchen in California, then a center for RC modeling, just due to the good weather and a lot of people enjoying the modeling at the time, started the magazine. And throughout the uh, late 60s, 70s, 80s, up through the mid-1990s, it was pretty much the standard modeling magazine for RC enthusiasts. In this video, we'll go through the January 1971 issue of RC Modeler magazine. It's kind of fun to take a look at what the hobby was back then. Remember, back in 1971, radio control sets were still pretty expensive. To get a basic four-channel uh, radio control set, transmitted receivers could easily be $1,200. Top-of-the-line craft systems could be um, more than $4,500 for a radio control set. They were very expensive. And even to cope with this, there were manufacturers such as Heathkit that um, offered kits where you could build your own radio control set. And remember, because it was um, non-computer uh, radios, you had basically for everybody a transmitter and a flight pack. It was very unusual to have multiple flight packs per airplane because you were on the same frequency and there was a frequency deconfliction that had to be followed to use your radios. So when you saw planes at the field, uh, they were all built by the modeler, maybe a few government swap meets. Um, there were no almost ready to fly aircraft at all back in the early 1970s. And so you find that uh, magazines like RC Modeler focused a lot on the basics, how to build these um, RC Model airplanes, building techniques, covering techniques, even things like um, meets. Uh, in this issue, the, the Rhinebeck Aerodrome um, meet in New York is covered. Because there was no internet back then, this is in 1971, the practical internet was still 25 years away. There was no YouTube, there were no computer videos. So things like an RC airplane meet was important enough to cover in the magazine because there was no other way to view something like this. Most modelers got their supplies from local hobby shops. There were a lot of hobby shops that were well stocked. And even in these beginning days, you could see a few ads for mail order um, companies that would send you uh, modeling items through the mail. Tower Hobbies, which was a very well-known company um, even today, first began in 1971, uh, just the, when this issue came out. So let's take a look at this issue of RC Modeler Magazine. You can see it, it's the beginning. One of the things that RC Modeler Magazine did well was they had a stable of contributing columnists. It could be Sunday flyers, building techniques, scale technique. There's just a few of them here because this is the beginning. The model the magazine grew over time. But these columnists were very good. They had a good viewpoint. They were worth reading. The other thing that RC Modeler had at the time as part of his business model was they would have construction articles for radio controlled aircraft. And uh, these were um, construction articles. There were plans that you could get full size from the magazine. You would order them and they have a pretty extensive plans library for some very original aircraft. You can still get these plans. You have to hunt around for them on the internet. But that was just what people did. It was not unusual to have three construction plans in every issue of RC Modeler Magazine. So again, uh, one thing we all remember about RC Modeler Magazines are the range of covers. They had very interesting um, photographs of models, uh, full color, from a variety of uh, viewpoints for the modeler. And it was just a well-written, substantial publication that models relied upon month after month. And um, so let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. This is a cover of the January 1971 issue of RC Modeler. Beautiful picture of the VK triplanes, the kit we'll see later on. And you can see it starts off with a bunch of ads that had only been in publication for eight years. So just a lot of things needed to build and operate models in conjunction with your local hobby shop. Nice picture of a fly baby kit. And it's a fairly small magazine, <clears throat> less than 80 pages. But you can see here, there are a list of some of the standard people, Don Dewey, the publisher, um, Dick Technor, the te uh, Dick Kidd, the technical editor, Patricia Cruz, who were with the magazine for years. Still kind of a home feel. It was very much made up um, 
in, in, in a beginning setting. There's no computer set up. Hobby Lobby was one of the early mail order companies. See, Hobby Lobby carried a lot of things to include fuselage uh, components to build a kit, not an RF, just a way to build a kit. Again, all mail order, uh, all of these catalogs are done by mail order. Here's an ad for Hobby Poxy. Hobby Poxy was a very popular glue and paint system. We mixed it up. It's now illegal due to the um, envir environmental rules. Just a, th a touch on uh, world record holders. This is a distance thing for gliders. You can see that for Dubro. Probably the most popular clinic was uh, column was Clarence Lee's engine clinic. Clinic, electric motors basically did not exist in 1971 due to the motors and batteries. Everybody was having problems with engines. Clarence Lee was the go-to person for that. Scale and hand was another super popular column by Dave Platt. Uh, Dave Platt was an extremely well-known and capable scale modeler. This entire column is how to mix paints to get the correct paint color for your scale RC airplane. Again, a very popular column. Ken Willard was a uh, Sunday Flyer columnist. He designed a lot of airplanes. This is a glider that he uh, designed, the Maxi Sailor. This is how RC model would work. They would have uh, between two and three plans per month. Uh, Dick Kidd drew out these plans from Ken, very professionally done plans. You can see the complexity of the ribs, all hand-drawn back then. You would order the plans full size, and many, many people, to include myself, built models from RC Modeler magazine. People did a lot of building back here back then. This was a Heathkit buddy box where you could train somebody with a separate transmitter plugged in, literally instructions how to build that. This is an entire article on how to make a T-tail for a flying stabilizer, you know, which would be common for sailplanes. In the age before the internet, YouTube videos, and so forth, to see models at an RC model meet, the magazine was one of the main ways to do it. This is a Rhinebeck Jamboree. It's been going on for several years. It's still going on in um, the old Rhinebeck uh, Aerodrome in New York. And this is a chance for models to see scale models that you just didn't see that often, often at your home field. The 1970 Masters Tournament, there were a series of uh, pattern or aerobatic um, competitions that were covered in great detail. This was just a thing with a lot of uh, people who were attracted by folks who could do this. Again, radar control flight was still quite new in 1971. The idea of having these precise patterns, aerobatic patterns flown by models was of interest. Uh, this is a new um, Era 2 by Chuck Cunningham, who was another columnist for RC Model Magazine and the editor. You can see that it's just a good pattern design, uh, nothing special. It uses a foam wing that you could uh, purchase and have it cut along with the full-size plan, so you didn't have to worry about building the wing, just a few slash tail surfaces, and you'd have a pretty uh, well-flying pattern model. This is of interest. There is an entire article section with technical specifications on building your own retractable landing gear. There are models out there that had the capability to do something like this. This is precise machining, and it's just the level of uh, work that modelers oftentimes did back then to get their RC models flying. Of course, something like this today you simply buy through the internet, but there are people back then, you can see these diagrams, of retractable landing gear that somebody made at their home. And it, it really is amazing that somebody could tackle and publish um, this amount of detail for retractable landing gear. This is another construction article to build a tachometer. Um, back when everybody was flying internal combustion engines, gas engines, the tachometer, how fast your prop was turning, was very important to see how the engine ran. So a tach was a pretty normal thing. Here's an actual um, article on how to build your own uh, electronic tachometer. Again, just a lot of skill required. For what it's worth, it was a popular section, how to do certain things, adding um, side or down thrust or motor mount, spoilers, just uh, tricks of the trade for people, because every, most everybody was building models in their home at this time. You can see an ad for Dremel motor, tool, motor tools still around in 2022. A few uh, kit operators here and there. Again, just techniques for clunks, servo overrides. This is a review of the SIG uh, Yak aerobatic airplane kit. Again, SIG built extremely complete kits that were very popular with modelers uh, everywhere. 
An ad for XAXO XACTO tools and razor blades. Here's that VK triplane that was on the cover. We get an extremely detailed scale kit. And large models at that time were two inches a square foot. Uh, Canon was popular for radio control sets, especially the smaller radio control sets. Keep in mind that a um, $250 radio set back in 1971 would be equal to about $2,500 today in terms of cost. A DEVCON 5 and epoxy, just again educating modelers on the best epoxy for various tasks. Uh, Rocket City was a, again a popular uh, company for parts. Carl Goldberg, in addition to kits, made a lot of uh, control horns fittings for the models. Uh, here is some more um, radio control sets. Again, these radio control sets, the, the CAFT, uh, CRAFT line, which is probably top of the line, those uh, four to six channel radio control sets, my friend had one back in the day, were very good. They could easily be $4,500. It's like buying a car almost. So what happens is you don't see a lot of pricing in the magazine because they expected you to buy them at your local hobby dealer. And this is how the hobby dealers made a lot of their money selling radio control sets. A uh, Boeing 727, again, with a prop uh, drive, more on the retracts. It, notice it uses a servo to retract the gear. The assembly was just the mechanics of the gear. Every now and then, people would pop up with model airplane kits. You can see the Gladiator and then the fiber foam. And then here's a flight box trainer, just trying to sell a trainer. Again, uh, more radios that are available here in a kit form. Foam core uh, wings were quite popular. Uh, Hobby World, another mail order catalog. But again, the local hobby shops were quite prevalent, uh, citizenship radios. And so it was ads, hopefully to buy the stuff at the local hobby shop. The uh, mail order places hadn't quite taken over the way they are right now. Notice also for craft radios here, the finest unit, but here's a series of repair shops. You had to have the things repaired periodically. And DRC was a popular mail order place. Uh, servo saver springs there was no computer radios back then uh, just to try to ease the installation of your servos and again the toledo uh, week signals uh, uh, conference was a, one of the larger trade shows come come through in the spring and add for that notice if you wanted to change your address you had to mail it in no computers to do that proline was another popular form of radios a uh, hunter kit starters engine mounts again Everybody was building airplanes. So it was a lot of stuff to help you complete your airplane. Here was a Tatone had the combination nose gear steering and engine mount, which was pretty popular. Tony Toss was heavily advertised um, uh, ho hobby store. Uh, Fox motors were popular with many modelers and American made uh, uh, gas motor for your airplanes. The Japanese motors are just starting to come in. We always got a kick out of Hong Kong advertising their one hobby shop there, the Radar Company Limited. That was in magazines a lot. Again, the Kraft radios coming down towards the end. And actually a classified ad listing for various components. Thank you very much for looking at this video. It's amazing how far the hobby has come with computerized radios, lower prices, a range of almost ready to fly, ready to fly kits. You can literally take them out of the box, charge the battery and fly. It's just a, it's revolutionary how much things have changed in the space of about 55 years from the time this magazine was published. It's all for the good. I think we're beneficiary, beneficiaries of it and I wish everyone the best with their RC modeling projects. Thank you.